So in this video, we're going to be finding out whether or not the function f of z equals the imaginary part of z is holomorphic. Now what you'd normally do with this type of question is to use the Cauchy-Riemann equations, but unfortunately this problem becomes quite trivial if you do it in that manner. So instead we're going to use the limit definition of a derivative to solve this problem. Now you might remember when finding limits of functions at a particular point, you'd approach that point from the left or the right, the left hand or the right hand limits. The cool thing about complex analysis is that you can actually approach your point from any direction that you like. So let me just draw a diagram to illustrate this. So this is the complex plane. So suppose that's the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. And let's say I've got some arbitrary function f of z and I want to approach that function as z approaches z0 and let z0 be the origin. So if I wanted to, I could take the limit uh, from this direction or from this direction from this direction, or from this direction, from this direction, or from this direction, and so on and so forth, and you get the picture. And for my function to be holomorphic at this point, at the origin, all of these limits have got to be the same. So if f of z equals the imaginary part of z is not holomorphic, then all I've got to do is show that two of these limits are different. So if I take two of these different directions and they've got different limits, then my function can't be holomorphic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the limit definition of the derivative and approach along the real axis first and then the imaginary axis and then compare my answers and see if they're different. So let's do that. So the first thing I've got to do is I've got to write out the limit definition of a derivative. So if f of z is differentiable, so if f of z is differentiable or holomorphic, it's holomorphic, at some point z0, which I'll call x0 plus i times y0, because z0 is a complex number, then the following limit exists. So the following limit exists. We've got the limit as z approaches z0 of f of z minus f of z0 all over z minus z0. But f of z is the imaginary part of z and f of z0 is the imaginary part of z0. So this becomes the limit as z approaches z0 of the imaginary part of z minus the imaginary part of z0, all over z minus z0. But z equals x plus i y, and z0 equals x0 plus i y0. So the imaginary part of z is just y, and the imaginary part of z0 is just y0. So this limit is just the limit as z approaches z0 of y minus y0 all over z minus z0. So this is where I'm going to break up this thing into two different cases. I'm going to approach uh, z0 horizontally and vertically. So let's do that. So let's approach z0 horizontally. Let's choose a different color here. Okay, so let's approach z0 horizontally, so case 1. So z approaches z0 horizontally. Well, if I approach z0 horizontally, that means z minus z0 is a real number. So that means z minus z0 is a real number. And if z minus z0 is a real number, then it has an imaginary part of 0. So what's the imaginary part of z minus z0? Well, it's y minus y0. So that means that y minus y0 is 0, which obviously means that y equals y0. So now if I substitute this into my limit, well, what am I going to get? Well, I've got y minus y0 over z minus z0. And if I substitute y equals y0, then I'm going to get y0 minus y0 over z minus z0. But that's just 0 over z minus z0, and that's 0. So my limit as z approaches z0 horizontally along the real axis is 0. OK, so now let's approach it the other way. Let's try approaching z0 vertically, so along the imaginary axis. So let's have a, another case here. Let's try a different color. So case number two. So let's say that z approaches z0 vertically. So z approaches z0 vertically. 
So that means z minus z0 is imaginary. So z minus z0 is imaginary. If you haven't seen this notation before, this means uh, imaginary number. So if that's true, then if I do z minus z0, well, the real part of this thing is going to be 0. So I'm going to get some complex number with a 0 real part and some imaginary part. And what's the imaginary part of this thing? Well, it's y minus y0, as we previously pointed out. So the complex number is going to end up being i times y minus y0. So now if I substitute this back into my limit, what I get is the following. So I've got the limit as z approaches z0 of, what have I got? Let's see. Well, I've got y minus y0 all over z minus z0. But z minus z0 is i times y minus y0. So this is the limit as z approaches z0 of y minus y0 all over i times y minus y0. But these y minus y0 terms just cancel. So I'm left with uh, 1 over i, which is minus i. And so I end up getting two different limits. When I approached uh, along the real axis, I got an answer of 0. And now when I'm approaching along the vertical axis, the imaginary axis, I get an answer of minus i. And these two limits are different. So that means that the function can't be holomorphic. So using the limit definition of a derivative and just approaching a point in two different ways, I've shown that this function can't be holomorphic.